Even though the water doesn't look very appealing, Kristen Romy is about to jump into plunge into the depths. There's a big clue about why she's going through this right above her head. Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. Today we will talk about what divers explore underwater. This is a 2,300-year-old pyramid. Stay with us to learn about this interesting discovery. In this part of the north of Sudan, there is a pyramid that is a memorial to a long-dead king and a sign of a kingdom that used to rule much of northern Africa. When Romy and her co-worker get to their destination, they find something amazing. A man is lying under the pyramid, but he's not just any man. A pharaoh from Nubia was buried here more than 2,000 years ago. Now, an archaeologist who has learned about Romeo goes down a set of stairs cut into the rock. If she needs air, she only has a small canister. Pierce is waiting for Romy at the bottom of the stairs. National Geographic also gives money to Paul Kriesman, who is also an archaeologist. He greets his co-worker and tells him it's very deep today. In the first room, Kriesman won't be able to move, and he's already up to his chest in dirty water. Kriesman broke into Nastison's tomb for the first time just a few weeks ago. Now, he and Romy will go down into the three chambers together to look at a casket that looks like it has been there for hundreds of years. Kriesman shows Romy a metal grate and tells her that she will have to fit through a small hole to get into the catacomb before they reach their goal. The tombs of the two Nuri are also near the east bank of the Nile River, which is north of Khartoum, the capital of Sudan. Most people know about the area because about 20 pyramids were built there between 650 and 300 BC. Masterson's Pyramid has a square base that is 100 feet wide and sits on a small flat area of land. Even though the tomb is only a mile from the river, it often floods due to groundwater. The kings and queens of the Kushites were also buried in the pyramids, which makes them very important. After the fall of the New Kingdom, these black pharaohs were in charge of the Egyptian emperors at first, but as time went on, they became more important. Around 760 BC, the Kushites tried to take over and rule all of Egypt. Most of the ideas that the five black pharaohs had came from the past. Even though its gold production made it hard to ignore, and even though the Neo-Assyrians drove the black pharaohs out of Egypt in the 7th century BC, they still ruled over their desert land until the 4th century AD. It's possible that King Taharqa was the first person to be buried at Nuri. His pyramid is still the largest one in the area. Even after the sands had buried Kush for a long time, Taharqa's descendants continued to use the area as a cemetery. So Reisner went to Nuri at the start of the 20th century to dig in Taharqa's tomb. The Egyptologist also drew maps of the other buildings in the area. He also found something important at the site, water from the Nile in the groundwater. This would make it hard to study the site more. But Reisner didn't even try to get his work at Nuri published. Archaeologists didn't pay much attention to Nuri because the site was so big and many of the tombs might have been underwater. Sudan had never tried underwater archaeology before 2018, so a trained archaeologist focused on Nuri. Kriesman has done more underwater archaeology and knows more about Egypt's history than Reisner. Most of Kriesman's work has been done in the Valley of the Kings and in Thebes. He has even received awards from the Royal Geographical Society for his work. Kriesman looked at the tomb of Nastison, who was king of Kush from 335 BC to 315 BC. When he went to Nuri, Nastison got the least attractive piece of land because he was the last ruler to be buried there. At the end of the Napaan culture, the center of Nubian power moved to the Marrow, but the arch nastiness continued to rule. When Nastison was in charge, he had strong control over a large area. This made a big difference. Masterson showed he was in charge when an Egyptian king named Kabash attacked Kush. Kabash also did not do well in the ambush. He and his people were defeated by the Nubian forces, who took a lot of their treasure and naval forces. Even though Nastison is not well known, Historians know a little bit about this war because Nastison had a five-foot-tall Stella granite monument built after he beat Kabash. Later, the asteroid was found near the Nile in the city of Dongola, 
which is in northern Sudan. New hieroglyphs are also written on the stone. The writing on the stone is glad the black pharaoh won. To get into the tomb, the archaeologist had to fight his way through this chute. He almost went blind when he did this. Then, once the divers were inside the burial chamber, they could finally see Nastison's coffin, which was a big stone box that held his body. But it took them a year to get inside. The pit that Reisner's teammate dug a long time ago would also need to be looked at. Kriesman told the BBC that there are three rooms with vaulted ceilings in Nastison's grave. Your flashlights will show you what's inside if you don't turn them on. Gladly, getting into the chambers was worth the trouble. Kriesman told Newsday that some Baptists were still there and that not all of the gold offerings had been taken. He said that even though the water had broken the glass, the small statues covered in gold were still there. Also, the small bits of gold that the archaeologists found pointed to an interesting story. It looked like the water might have made it hard for thieves to get into the tomb. If they could have gotten in, they would have taken the gold statues, because they were easy to sell for money. Kush was once one of the most important places for making gold, so it shouldn't be too surprising that gold leaf was found there. Artists from the Cushitic culture not only made jewelry from scratch, but also used gold leaf to decorate temples and figurines. The trade in gold made the nation rich and gave Kush some power in the countries close by. Archaeologists dug up a site in northern Sudan that they thought was important for Kush's gold industry a few years before Kriesman's trip. They found stones that could have been used to crush gold ore into small pieces of gold. Almost certainly, Nuri will find more things. If Kriesman's group can find the tomb of Nastison, they might also be able to find the tomb of Untu. That's it for today. We hope you guys enjoyed the video. What do you think about this discovery? Tell us in comment section. Please like and share our videos. Don't forget to subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for regular updates.